Hi guys, Squirrel here. Welcome to another mod review video. This one for American Truck Simulator. Now you may have seen my previous mod review video where I did a vintage truck for Euro Truck. So I thought, hey, you know what? Let's do a vintage truck for American Truck Sim. So this is the Scott A2 HD. And you're probably wondering, what on earth is this truck? Is this a fictional truck? Is it a real one? It's actually a real truck. It was actually built between 1976 and 1980. Uh, it's a Canadian truck. It's actually built in Nova Scotia in Canada, and it was built by a company that was a subsidiary of JD Irving. In this video, we're going to have a quick look at the truck, see what it can do, and then of course, we'll take it for a drive. First of all, let's talk about how you get this mod installed. So I'll leave a link in the video description to the mod itself. It's actually on the SCS forum, so you can download the mod file or you can get it from the Steam Workshop. Either way, you need to install the mod and then get it activated. The actual truck is available in the Peterbilt dealer, so once you go straight to the Peterbilt dealer, either buy online or visit direct, you should see it listed here, the Scott A2 HD day cab. After that, it's just a matter of customizing. So this is the truck, this is the Scott A2 HD, and this is what it looks like. It's pretty well modeled. Uh, you can see underneath the wheel arches, they've got some engine detail going on here. And just general quality in the modeling is actually quite good. Now, there's only one option for the cabin. There's this day cab here. We don't get any other choice, but there are some choices when it comes to the chassis. Now, with the recent release of this uh, truck, truck mod, what they did was they had support for the brake and air hoses. So all these are operational. If you hook up some compatible trailers, you'll see they all attach and swing around as they should. However, there appears to be a bug in this current version where when you go from the 170-inch short wheelbase to the 200 inch short wheelbase it displaces the hoses back but doesn't actually attach them back onto the cabin itself so you get this weird floating effect uh, however when you attach the trailer they should still attach and swing by and look okay it's just this park position that looks a bit strange not really sure if they're supposed to live back over there anyway uh, but certainly in this version there appears to be a slight bug so you may want to go with the 170 inch just to look a little bit more kind of in place now, when it comes to engines, there is plenty of choice of the engines. Uh, they start with the Cummins 290 brake horsepower, which has 930 foot-pound of torque. Or for you Europeans, that's 1,261 newton meters. Now, there's lots and lots of choices here. As you can see, there's the 1978 engine. We've got 75 engines, uh, all the way down to the Formula 350 engine, uh, all from different eras. I've not tested all these out. I don't know if they've all got their own audio files. Uh, but what I can tell you is that the 450 brake horsepower pulls pretty well. What you tend to find with this engine, though, is it acts like it has a very large flywheel. And what I mean by that is when you're manually shifting, when you're revving, it takes a while for the revs to build up and a while for the revs to come back down again. I think it was more common back then, certainly, to have that kind of an engine because it's more momentum-based and it doesn't need to rev fast and hard, as it were. Uh, so what you'll, you'll feel it when you drive with manual. You'll definitely feel the effect of that. Uh, but what I can tell you, the 450 engine does sound pretty good and it pulls reasonably well. However, if you start hauling really heavy stuff, you're going to find yourself struggling, so you might want to bump up to a larger engine at that point. Now, in terms of transmissions, the default is the Eaton Fuller 13 speed. Uh, you can switch it down to 10 speed, and there's a quite a large selection of uh, gear ratios for you to play with. So if you're if you are hauling anything a bit specialist and trying to stick a smaller engine in there, well, maybe you can change the ratios to give yourself a bit more torque. Uh, it does go up to a 15 speed, and there's even an 18 speed, uh, where is it here? Uh, and there's even options to have it with a retarder. However, I don't know if this truck actually had a retarder back then. I, I would have thought it's more likely that it just had a jake brake to go with it. But, you know, if you like your retarder, well, you've certainly got options. Let's move on to the interior and exterior of the truck. Now, the interior hovers zero options in terms of configuration. However, what you get is this kind of very, very basic interior. And the seat is laughably simple. I don't know what the interior of this truck looked like, but that is extremely basic. There's no luggage compartments, uh, no place to put your stuff. Stop it sliding around the floor like the floor is just bland and empty. This looks very, very plasticky indeed. The modeling at this point tends to be a little bit basic, I think. Uh, but I've not actually looked at the inside of one of these trucks for real. The dash, however, the dash is quite well done. There's lots of instrumentation here. Uh, a lot of it does actually move. There's a row of switches. These obviously don't seem to do very much. Uh, and then you've got what I think are your vent controls over here. 
Uh, so on the whole, like the dash itself, I mean, you, when you're driving, you tend to only see this part of the cab anyway. You tend to look around like that. So you don't tend to look down into the into the footwell, but the footwell isn't done particularly well. However, the gear knob does have some nice detail here, as you can see. It has the full kind of, almost like what they do with the Eaton Fuller when they put, print the actual gearbox layout on top. So it's not bad. It's a bit of a mix of things. Uh, windy windows, crikey. This really is the 70s. And then up top, you've got this very simple interior light. And uh, you can actually attach a radio on here. I'll show you that in a second. But yeah, it's totally basic. There are actually windscreen wipers. You just can't see them parked here. They're parked down below that ridge there. So that's the interior. On the exterior side of things, uh, it does actually come with some paint skins. Let me just show you that. So it's got this one here, the spear. And uh, they are actually fully configurable. So you can completely change the color however you like. Same with the belt line, which is this one. Got four color selection. Uh, the broad stroke, the uh, the onward and the stream. Now, all of these are kind of matte effects. They're not metallic effects, but that's what you would expect, expect anyway from a truck from the 70s. But if you do want to go metallic, it does allow you to configure for a metallic or standard option. But, you know, there's a decent selection of here, and I think there's probably skins in the workshop now available for this truck. So let's have a look at the actual accessories that you can put on this thing. As you can see, we've got a decent number of dots on the accessories. So what can we actually do with them? There's actually some more that are hidden if you spin the camera around as well. So we'll start up at the top back here. Uh, we've got backup lights, which are these things, or reverser lights, as I would prefer to call them. Uh, obviously, what they do, you stick it into reverse, and they light what's behind you. Then you've got this thing here, which is the beacon option. So it actually comes with its own built-in beakers. Now, these beakers do actually, beacons, I should say, do actually work. However... When you're inside the cab and you put the beacons on, I'll try to show you this in a minute, it actually, it's a bit like a disco inside. It's not very pleasant to drive with. So I don't recommend that you put the beacons on this truck for that reason. Uh, you've then got a rooftop air conditioning unit. Now this is something that is, yeah, it is what it is. It's not very uh, pretty, but you can get a more stylized version here. And if we quickly perhaps go and put one of these paint skins on, you'll see uh, that it is actually... Uh, integrated on that one whereas this one is just a plain white and that's just a plain gray so whether you want the air conditioning or not is entirely up to you uh the horns themselves you've got the snow cap versions and the non-snow cap version and remember this is a truck from nova scotia so they're more than used to having to deal with snow uh hence why they've got the snow cap versions but if you're driving this in california well there's not really much point uh then you've got the marker lights now the marker lights have effectively a large and a small option personally i quite like the small version of the lights uh but you're your taste may vary. This dot here is around the visor. Uh, it comes with four visors. You've got the standard visor. You've got this slightly slightly polished, shiny looking visor. You've got a painted visor, which of course integrates with the paint color. And then you've got a super shiny uh, chrome visor. This dot under here is actually the inside. If I quickly look to the inside and uh, show you that, that's an internal CB radio that you can put on the truck. Now, these two options here are, of course, your nameplate, nothing special here. Uh, there's a dot over there, which is the mirrors. So you can have the standard mirror, or you can have a mirror uh, with a light on, which I think flashes when you're indicating, so it's actually active. Now, coming down here, we have this super hilarious bug deflector. Now, why is it super hilarious? Well, that's why it's super hilarious. <laughs> it, it, you know, you think about it, and you think, how the heck could that actually stop anything? How can it even stop bugs? I mean, it is angled, so it looks like it's built to deflect the air in this direction. Whether this thing is effective or not, I couldn't tell you, but it does look a bit silly. However, you can actually integrate it nicely with the color of your truck. So the blue one actually looks pretty smart. And from the inside of the truck, well, you know, some might say it's it's in the way, it's horrible. Others might say, I quite like it. Again, it's entirely up to you. Uh, there's a dot down here, which is the fender extension. We'll come to that in a second. Let's have a look at the stock grill. Uh, the polished grill, the painted grill, the chrome grill, and the heavy duty grill. So what you've got here is four versions of the grill, which are a, a bit like the visor up there, and then this kind of heavyweight version, which I kind of like. I think that works better for me than the other four versions. This dot is all about the, the headlights. So you've got these rounded headlights, so it kind of has this almost Kenworth look at this point. Uh, sorry, um, no, Peterbilt look. No, no, Kenworth, it is right. Kenworth look at this point, um, if you remember what they looked like. And then down here, you've got this option for fog lights to put them inside here. And you've also got a number of options of the actual bumper itself. You can stick an oversized load sign just over the front of it, or you can choose from a quite healthy uh, number of bumper options, as you can see, with or without the yellow lights. Uh, it's entirely up to you. There's 
full version like that, a polished version, and even a super chrome version. I would suggest that going a bit chrome on this truck is probably not the right thing to do. I think it was a proper workhorse truck and very not likely to be configured to be super chrome shiny. Now there's a little option here uh, for the air filter. You can have it as a black vent, uh, you can have it as a painted, bare aluminium, or a chrome vent. Uh, the painted vent, I think, is taking its color from one of the four, but I don't know which one. One of them was set to black, so you can actually change the color to contrast with that white, or you can just set it to be black or, or chrome or vented. Uh, down here, you've then got options for wheels. Now, that it doesn't come with any wheels, but it does seem to work with, with other wheel mods that you might have, and it's the same situation uh, with the tires. No extra options here. Now, let's go for that option there. This is the, the mud flaps is these things here. There's a number of options that you can go through here. There's like Cummins engine, and there's the Cowgirl, uh, the truck parts, and then finally the actual Scott logo, which reminds me because there is actually an option. Uh, we'll come to that one in a second. There's a warning flag you can put on here, and as well, if you have the flag DLC, uh, you can put various flags over there, and they do flap around in the wind. There is actually an option uh, to put front mud flaps on here, but I can't seem to find it at the moment. Is it that one? No, that's the... Um that's that one there. That's the trim over the fender. Um, but there is another one. I can't find the dot, but there is a, a way to get front mud flaps on there, which also have Scott logos, but I can't seem to see the dot. Anyway, coming down the side, we've got the uh, a standard battery box. We've got a uh, kind of a silver battery box, and then we've got a wet line kit. Again, it's just some little, you know, detailed accessory that you can put on the truck. It doesn't actually functionally do anything for this truck, but it does look kind of cool. Uh, you've then got the various fender options, which are these uh, quarter fenders, uh, the heavy-duty half fender, and then the half fender kit. So again, depending on what kind of look you're going for, you can kind of vary that up. Uh, there is an option, though, which I think is a mirror. Yes, it is. So coming around here, you've then got these options. Uh, these are the pipes, of course. You've got the single pipe, which is your standard sort of short curve. You've then got this tall uh, mitered pipe. You've then got a tall curved pipe a tall double mitered pipe and a double tall curve pipe. Uh, I would suggest to you that you want to look at what engine you're putting in this thing and then make a sensible choice about what kind of exhaust stack you put on it. Uh, then you've got the, the back plate here. So you've got this diamond plate, which I think looks pretty good. Uh, you've got the bare diamond plate, which works with the, uh, the fender if you're going for that option. And then you've got a more kind of gray deck plate. And then finally, coming right down the back here, you've got some options about uh, mud flaps again, exactly the same as what you saw on the front. So you can, of course, uh, make them match. And that pretty much is all of your configuration options available. Um, when you jump to the inside, as I'll do now, now the inside, it does support the SISL accessories pack if you're using that. So you can actually get some extra options on here, but I'm just running it absolute bare minimum just so that you can see what options are available and basically well you get a rubber duck um <laughs> that's all you get over here and there's not much in the way of options either because if you look at the wheel there's only that wheel there's nothing that you can do to accessorize this thing but it does have the the dlc so you can get a little bit crazy with this if you want to in terms of sat nav you get one option here for sat nav However, I do have some sat-nav mods, and they do seem to work with this truck, so I can put a few different sat-navs here. Uh, but this is what you get uh, by default with the truck. Other than that, there's not a great deal else you can do apart from put something hanging down here, uh, change the CB radio, etc. That's it. It's, it's very minimal, this truck, and that's kind of how things were back in the, in the 70s and 80s. So that completes uh, the exterior and interior options for the truck. Let's go and take a drive and you can see what it looks like, hear what it sounds like, and I'll talk about what it pulls like. Well, here we are. This is the actual truck. And as you can see, I've configured it. I've got the, the flag DLC, so I've got some American flags on there. I would have put some Canadian flags on here, but unfortunately, well, there doesn't appear to be any Canadian flags in the flag DLC. Uh, one correction, uh, the lights on the mirrors are not used for indicators. They are only used as side lights, uh, if you like. So let's start it up and you'll hear what it sounds like. This is the 450 brake horsepower version with an 18, uh, sorry, a 13 speed Eaton Fuller gearbox. And let's start it up. And more importantly, listen to the revving. It sounds pretty good, doesn't it? But you can hear how slow it revs up. 
And if you actually look at the gauges down here, so RPM gauge is on the right of the wheel. You can see just how slowly this thing picks up the revs. Now the optimal for this truck seems to happen between about 1500 and 2000 RPM. As soon as you start to get over 2000, once you start heading towards 2500, pretty much the power tends to flatline, I've noticed. Now one awkward placement is the fuel gauge. The fuel gauge is actually just to the right of the wheel. You can see just to the right of the RPM gauge on the lower the lower four is the first one of the four. And it's the problem with it is that when you're driving like this, it really does obscure the fuel gauge. You just can't see what's going on. And since you can't actually adjust the steering wheel in this truck, if you press the F4 key and you try to adjust the wheel, it does absolutely not that one, does absolutely nothing. So I can't pitch or move this wheel uh, in order to get it out of the way. So that's just one of the little niggles. Other than that, like the rest of the dials seem to work okay. Uh, the mileage always starts on one, two, three, four, five, six, and I don't actually think it changes. Uh, but you can see you've got uh, around the outside, you've got the miles per hour, and then the yellow inner is the kilometers per hour. Again, don't forget this is a Canadian truck, and in Canada they work on kilometers. Uh, other than that, the stuff on the left is mostly redundant salt air pressure and that kind of thing, so it's not massively uh, of interest. And as I said, it does actually support these like SISL mods down there, so you put a pizza box and a bag and all that kind of thing. Uh, and yeah, that's the inside of the truck. That's a third-party uh, add-on for that one, so that's not a standard one. Outside, um, this is what it looks like. Indicators, that kind of thing. Uh, your brake lights. You see it's got flashing indicators there as well. That's at the parking brake off. That's what your brake lights look like. And then in terms of actual gear changes, so... Uh, like I said, I'm using the Eaton Fuller, so forward goes into first, backward comes into second, third, and fourth, and then if you uh, high range it, you've then got 5L, and you can split that into 5H, you know, the usual kind of four gears in the low range, eight gears in the upper range, and then you've got your standard reverse gear over here. That's it, that gives you the full 13 speed, so let's drive over the road and go and pick up a trailer. Now, one thing to warn you about is when you stick it into reverse, you get this... Uh, ridiculous reversing horn which honestly sounds like an alarm clock listen to this <laughs> that really sounds like something that wakes you up in the morning right this is a trailer for today this is going to be a uh, 10 ton trailer this is going to be one of the options for uh, operations big sir which i'm currently uh, completing i've done about seven jobs this will be the eighth one so we're going to haul this uh, from here. We're going to haul it uh, out of Santa Maria, northbound up Route 1, and drop it off at the big mudslide in order to complete that job. Right, let's put the side lights on, and you'll see how this pulls. You really can feel the weight. This is only a 10-tonner, but because of that slow revving engine, it has a very slow build-up. Don't expect to pull away the lights very quickly at all in this truck. It really makes you work for things. But I kind of like that, you know? Yeah, if you equip yourself with a manual shifter, you'll find that this is some interesting driving. You may have already spotted the wheel ratios. Now, Back then, it was more common for the wheels to have quite a lot of rotation in order to give you uh, the torque to turn the wheels. And this truck is no exception. So if I make a small movement on my wheel, it makes a very large movement on the driving wheel in front of us. Other than that, it seems to uh, drive pretty well. On the flat, it'll cruise quite happily. There's uh, a cruise control option, which of course wouldn't have been on the original truck, uh, but is available via the game. So it's quite an easy drive. But if you start to climb a hill, uh, you'll really start to feel the weight. I shouldn't be too bad with this thing because it's only 10 tons, but once you get into sort of 20, 30 tons, uh, you'll notice when you go up an incline, you know, try not to let yourself stop because if you do, you'll find you may be unable to get moving again, particularly with just the 450 engine. Now there's 2000 revs. You see how it's climbing very slowly. It really stops losing its pulling power at this point. Uh, so what I tend to do is I try to shift at around 2,000 revs. And it normally drops down to about 1,500. Like 
that. There you go. So yeah, other than that, it looks pretty good on the outside. I've coloured it in like a brown colour, uh, which I thought was, you know, I was trying to think of colours from the 70s and 80s because they tend to be a little bit flat, like white or like a dark green uh, or, you know, even a brown, which I've gone for here. Um, it's not ever going to look like a, a modern, highly chromed up polished truck, and it's certainly not going to drive like one. I mean, even now, what I found with this truck is when you're driving it, um, speed-wise, it, it feels like you're going faster than, than you really are, you know? Like, we're not even doing 45 at this point, and for some reason it feels like we're going quite quickly, so I have to keep checking the speedo, uh, and I have to keep checking the sat-nav, because I genuinely don't really have a feel for what speed I'm doing this truck. Now, I left the wind deflector on. Uh, now, unfortunately, bugs are not implemented in this game. I kind of wish they were. I wish there would... I wish there was dirt, dirt would accumulate on my truck, and I wish bugs would accumulate on my window. Um, and then if I could use the washers and wash them off, that would be great. Uh, but it would be nice to see the effect of having a bug deflector. If that was uh, implemented in the game, it would be nice if they kind of model the uh, the bug deflection. Sadly, it's not meant to be. Now, the mirrors are the interesting one. Because on this truck, in a natural seating position like this, I don't have a super high field of view. I have... I can't remember the field of view I've got set, but it's not, you know, I can see all of my dash, my dials and everything like that, and normally I can see my mirror. But on this truck I can't, and the reason is because the mirror is actually pushed right out on this framing, which is normally there to sort of, um, if you've got any big side stack exhaust, you know, that would allow you to see around them, or if you've got a big trailer, a wide trailer in particular, that would allow you to see around that, which is great. And, and works really well, but what it does mean is that you have to keep like looking over in order to see in your mirror, which I've got track IR, so that's not really a big deal, but if you're driving driving along and you're using your mouse to look around, say, uh, just be aware that you will have to keep moving that mouse every time you want to look in the mirrors, because they are so wide, like so far. It's almost a 180 degree turn to look between the mirrors. Lots of little detail sounds, I think you can probably hear them. Lots of little um, air compressor sounds and squeaks and groans, which is really nice. Lots of little detail in this truck. Now look at the wheel now, look at that. You see how much it spins? You get used to it, but it kind of looks a bit odd, you know, at first. When you first start driving, it looks a bit weird. I do like analog dials. There's something rather cool about them. I know we live in a modern digital age, but... Uh, Look at that, the man manifold pressure down there, top right. Look at it. It's great. Be careful, I'm starting to uh, get close to the 30 mark then. Okay, so this is the road in the Big Sur landslide. I don't know if you guys are doing this event, but it's still on at the moment. Uh, it's online contracts only. And you have to deliver things to the mudslide or take things away from the mudslide. And once they've got, I think it's 500,000 deliveries, then uh, I think the road, Route 1, will reopen again. This was, of course, based on the real-life uh, landslide that happened in 2017, I believe it was. So I'm just doing my bit to get this road unlocked. But I think this is part of, you know, something SCS is looking to do in the future with um, more kind of community-focused events where we all do deliveries and then certain things happen on the map which is kind of cool. So I think, you know, if you want a summary of this truck, like, is it worth driving? I would say yes. Um, it's fun and it's different, uh, but it may not be your main truck. Although I have had, I have had plenty of people say to me, oh my God, my dad had one of these trucks. Like they were watching me drive this on Sunday Night Trucking and they were saying to me, my dad's watching right now, and he used to drive one of these trucks in the 70s. Like, it's crazy. Uh, so there is that kind of connection. Or maybe you're a trucker. You know, you were a trucker back in the 70s and 80s, and this was like this is a truck you remember being on the road, or this is something you drove. There is a certain historical retro aspect to this. Um, so if you just want to have something different, or just have a bit of a challenge, or just want to go back in time, you know, this, this truck can offer that. Just dropping it down to 40 for that speed limit. There's no trucks or, or vehicles on the road right now anyway. But uh, I will try to stick to the speed limit anyway. Let's just move up a gear. 
little bit too high revs. The truck itself is quite thirsty, uh, I've noticed, which, you know, again, is not really uncommon for a truck of this era. Um, but you will find you need to keep your eye on the fuel, and because the fuel gauge is so cunningly hidden behind the steering wheel, uh, you may want to keep pressing F3 and just double-checking uh, to see what fuel level you're on, because otherwise you can run out of fuel. Like, I have been driving along and then suddenly got a warning about running out of fuel um, <laughs> without even realising it. Because it will it will happen. I don't know how many miles per gallon it does, but it's not a great deal. So that has been the Scott A2 HD. Uh, we're just going to carry on delivering this thing and then drop it off. But uh, I, I would say give this mod a go. Give it a go in ATS and uh, I think you'll have a lot of fun. All trucks must turn left. Not me. I'm going straight on. How far have we got? 50 miles. Easy. I've got this thing in cruise control at the moment, and it's got no problem just cruising along. But uh, I think we'll jump forward now and drop this thing off. Right, here we are at the destination. The big landslide is here. Now let's just get the routing right. It's a bit of a tricky one. You, when you come in from the south like this, you have to kind of go around this thing. It caught me out at first. I just drove straight in there and found myself in the wrong place. Some of the jobs actually pick up from this yard here. This particular one drops off at the yard further on, on the north side. There are two yards here. So you just have to be careful and just drive around the coast. It's a massive landslide, isn't it, eh? I think they're still clearing this thing up in real life as well. Absolutely huge landslide. Can't imagine how many trucks and bulldozers it's taken to shift it all. Also, the drop-off here is pretty interesting as well. Or it can be. It can be quite a sneaky reverse. Let's see where we're at. Yep, it's a sneaky reverse. What I'm going to do is I'm going to drive in between these two. Like that. So look at it, it's right in the middle of all these other... Um, all these other diggers and plant machinery. Let's get over here. And then we're going to have a heck of a turn. While the alarm clock blows up in our face. Gotta make a real tight turn like that. Yeah, it was almost right. Slightly off. We'll have to correct it. I might still accept it. Hang on. It's between the cones. Yeah, there you go. It accepted it. So there you go, another drop-off for Operation Big Slur, and that was the Scott A2 HD truck mod. Uh, hope you enjoyed that truck mod review. If you did, please give me a thumbs up, and the link to it is all in the video description. Until the next one, take care, guys. Happy trucking.